Hello and welcome to this training session on data stage. Today we are going to learn about some of the functions that can be used within the transformer stage of data stage. Now transformer stage as we already know is a processing stage and it is a very powerful processing stage. We have already seen some of the features of the transformer stage and how this stage can be configured to work in a data stage job. Now, while defining derivations in the transformer, functions can be defined. These are data stage provided functions and each of, each of them have their own functionalities. Now, the transformer functions are grouped within categories. These categories are based on the kind of operation they perform or sometimes the kind of data types on which they perform the operations. So let's start with the string functions. String functions, as the name says, they'll be performing some operations on string data types. So the first function we're going to look is a convert function. Now convert, as the name suggests, convert is a function that can be used to convert a character by some other character. So let's say our input column, input is column A and its value is Tom hyphen mark. Now I want to convert the hyphen into colon. So what should I do? I should go to my derivation cell. I should double click and then right click on it. I should go to the functions property. Within the functions, I should, I should go to the string function category and select the convert function. Once I select the convert function and I, the, that convert function will be populated in my derivation box, but it would be expecting some input parameters. So what are the parameters I need to define? So for each of these functions, they would have their own syntax and they would demand their own input parameters, which we would need to provide. That is why we need to understand the syntax of these functions. Now, this is a one function. If you look at this, you have the first uh, input parameter that we have provided is the hyphen. That means the character which we want to replace. The second parameter that has been provided is the colon which means the character by which we want to replace the hyphen. And the third parameter is the input column on which we want to perform the operation or the string on which we want to perform the operation. So now I'm saying convert hyphen into colon which comes in input column A. So what would be my output? My output would, would be Tom space colon space mark. Now let's move on to the other function. This is the field function. Now just by uh, looking at the name, we cannot infer what it means. So let's look at this function. Now let's assume that we have an input column A and the value of that column is chocolate ice cream candy, all separated by some kind of delimiter, which is a comma in this case. Now my requirement is to find the string that occurs between the nth occurrence of the delimiter. Now my delimiter is a comma in this case. My nth occurrence let's say is the second occurrence. So this field function if you write it as the string on which you want to perform the operation which is my input column A then the delimiter which is comma and the second occurrence of the delimiter. So what it will do is it will return the output as a string between the second and the first occurrence of the delimiter, which is comma. So the nth and the n minus first occurrence. So what is that? If we go to the input column A string, the second occurrence of the comma occurs after the word ice cream. The first occurrence occurs after the word chocolate. So what would be my output? My output would be ice cream. Now, what if I say field input column A, that is a string on which I want to perform my operation, the delimiter, which is comma, the second occurrence and two strings, two consecutive strings around that occurrence. So in this case, what are the two consecutive strings around that occurrence? Ice cream and candy. So it will pick up two strings around that occurrence. That's why it has picked up the next string as well, which is candy. So the output in this case is ice cream comma candy. Now let's look at this function index. So all these are very useful functions. They use many times in your practical scenarios. So it is better to have an understanding and be aware that these kind of functions are available in data stage. So instead of writing some complicated logic, you can directly go for these functions. Now index function will do what? 
let's assume the input is chocolate chocolate ice cream candy i write a function index input column a chocolate 2 so what does it mean the string on which i want to perform my function the string and 2 is the second occurrence of that string the string that i am searching and the second occurrence of that string now the second occurrence of that uh, string is just after the comma there's a space and the second occurrence occurs so what is my output in this case my output is 12 so index gives you the position the position of the nth occurrence of the string so in this case the nth is 2 or the second the string is chocolate so the position where the second occurrence of the string chocolate occurs so if you count from the beginning here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 the second occurrence of chocolate starts as the 12th position so that is what this would return the 12 the number or the position at which the nth occurrence of that string occurs now left now left if you have worked with any sql you would know that what a left function would do simple function you have again the let's assume the input is chocolate chocolate ice cream candy i say left input column a 9 so nine characters it will start counting from the left nine characters and it will return that to you as the output so if we start counting from c 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so this here we end with the ninth character so this is my ninth character chocolate next is the function called length so length will simply count the number of characters or the length of the string and return to you that as a numeric column so chocolate the length should be length input column a that is a string on which you want to perform your function and the output would be nine because the string chocolate consists of nine characters now there's a function called num so what it does is let's assume the input is 22 I say num of input dot column a what will be my output one now let's say the input is 22 in as a string or in alphabets what is my output zero so what can you understand by this num is a function that tests whether the value in the input column or the string that you're trying to test can be converted into a valid numeric value if yes it will return a 1 if no it will return a 0 so num 22 22 is a valid number so if you process that it has returned a value of 1 but 22 in alphabets is a string that cannot be converted into a numeric field that cannot be mapped to a numeric column so that is why your result would be 0 so if you have a requirement where you want to check whether let's say there is a phone number coming in and we want to see that there are no special characters in that we want to make sure that it has only numbers in it so we can check we can validate that phone number saying if num phone number is equal to one then process the record further otherwise reject the record now another string function is part string what this will do a b c one pad string input column a which has the value of a b c 1 with 0 and 5 occurrences of that 0 so what will be your output your output will be a b c 1 1 2 3 4 5 so when you have a fixed length output column defined and you do not want to have any spaces or nulls in it then you can use the pad string character it would just fill the empty space with those many number of characters any character can be defined for example in the function we defined a zero and we defined five occurrences of the zero so it has just padded five characters to it so for example sometimes you might have character data type then you can just pad some spaces to it then we saw the left function a similar function is the right function so left function what did it do it extracted the number of characters that we specified in the function from the left now right would do the opposite it would extract those many number of characters from the right so again we have this chocolate chocolate ice cream candy we say right of input column a five characters from the right so it will extract for you the word candy now space what does this function do space 
100. All right. Space input column A. Input column A has a value of 100. What will happen? You will get 100 space characters in your output. So again, if you want to populate with a blank or something, you do not want to leave it to null. You want to populate something. You can just populate 100 or whatever is your varchar length or your char length you can populate those many space characters when you do not when you don't have a nullable column probably you don't want a null in that column then you can populate it with those many space characters str what is this str function now let's say we have a string called chalk i say okay so my i have an input column that has a value of chalk i say string whatever is my value in my input column and comma five what will happen in your output you'll get that string which you mentioned in your function repeated those many number of times so five we mentioned in a function so it will be repeated five times if you mention seven it will be repeated seven times you mentioned two it will be repeated two times so if you just want to repeat a character multiple number of times then you can use this function str now let's move on to some other string functions the trim function now trim function again if you have dealt with sql if you have worked on sql you would know trim is a function that is used to delete the spaces right now it's a pretty powerful function in data stage let's see how it works it can remove all leading and trailing spaces and tabs now the trim function in data stage i just mentioned is a pretty powerful function and we can define a lot of options with this function which will make it remove any kind of character from your string so if you say a it will remove all the occurrences of the strip char that means any character that you have defined to be stripped it will remove all the occurrences of that character if you say b it will remove both leading and trailing occurrences of the strip character if you say d it will remove leading trailing and redundant white space characters if you say e it would remove trailing white space characters if you say f it would remove leading white space characters if you say l it would remove all leading occurrences of strip char if you say r it will remove leading trailing and redundant occurrences of strip char if you say t it will remove all trailing occurrences of strip char now there is no need to memorize all of these if you function you keep on building data stage jobs and using these functions at some point of time you'll be able to recall them without having a look at this list but for now you can just have a list somewhere note these down somewhere and refer to these when you want to implement any of the functionality using the trim function now all these are the various options some of them mean leading some of them mean remove the trailing strip character some of them mean all strip characters so let's look at a few examples now trim i say trim test if you see the input data has got some space in the end or the trailing space so what trim would do it would just remove all the spaces leading and trailing so in the output i would get a, a character or a string without the space leading or trailing space now most of the time this would be a requirement and this is a good thing to do if you have any varchar and especially if you want to do a lookup or a join so if the same value as a varchar is coming from two different links it is a good idea to do a trim because somewhere it might be having a space it might be that there's a data type length uh, mismatch so it's always advised to do a trim then let's take this example and the example now here we have two dots which are the leading dots there's a dot in between and then there are some trailing dots as well so let's say trim input dot column a then just dot we have just said trim let's see what happens so what trim would do it would remove the leading and the trailing dots it did not remove the dot in between so to do that let's see so now again we have the same input character with the leading dots with the trailing dots and a dot in between we say trim input column a specify the strip char 
or the character that we want to strip that is the dot and we specify the option a now a if you remember from a last slide meant all so what is the output the output now is test test so it has removed the leading the trailing and all the characters anywhere any occurrence of the strip character now let's again take this example now this time we have the option t t means trailing so what we have in the output is all the trailing dots removed the leading dots have not been removed the dot in the between has not been removed trim b now we just have a space which is trailing what will we get it will remove the trailing space trim f will remove the forward state all the or the leading space so trim f input dot column a the leading space gets removed trim leading trailing now this is an example i have a leading space i have a trailing space i say trim leading trailing input column a the leading and the trailing space both will get removed so that's why you can use trim to remove any kind of character you can use it with the options that can specify any strip character to be removed you can either remove them from all the occurrences or the leading or the trailing occurrences so if you use this wisely this will also turn out to be a pretty powerful function now those were some of the strength functions very useful functions so it's always better to keep a note of all those functions and you will be using them in many scenarios when you uh, go and design data stage jobs so now let's move on to another category of the functions which are the type conversion functions another very important kind of functions now why are these important because many times this will happen that in your source system you have a value a column defined of some another data type but in the target you want it in some other data type for example your date might be coming as a string from your source file but in the target table you want it is defined as a timestamp so now you want to convert it into a timestamp how to do that also it probably might be the case that in the target you want the date to be in a specific format so now you need to do formatting so all these things can be done using the type conversion functions date to string so your input is date in the output you want string this is your input 18th august 2009 right and date to string input dot column a what will be your output date to string in this format and what will be your output so this is your going to be your output date to string if you just say date to string and you define the format in which you want percent dd percent mm percent y y y y then you can define your format in which you want so your input call input is 2009-08-08 so this is your input let's say right and you define a date to string input column a in this format with the colon in between so your output would be 18 colon 08 colon 2009 let's ignore this part the upper part for the moment let's just focus on the one date to string input column a and the format and your output would be in that specified format now if it is decimal to string you have something like this which is a decimal you want to convert it into a string or a varchar so you can define various options with that now when a decimal will come if you have defined it of a distinct length or a unique length then if you have defined the length as 10 the precision as 10 and the value is just 4 so still it will have zeros to fill up those 10 uh, precision digits which we have specified so now i don't want this converted as 0004.00 in my varchar i want to remove any of the zeros which are not meaning meaning anything so the zeros in front of four and the zeros after the dot do not mean anything for me so i can use the option called suppress zero so decimal to string input dot column a suppress zero what will be my output four the value without the zeros which do not mean anything so it will suppress all the zeros decimal to string fix zero so it will do what it will add the zeros based on whatever is your length of the string 
so let's see uh and let's take another example this is my values triple zero one two three four four dot one two zero this will become like this but if i suppress the zero now this is my value input value i want to suppress the zero what will be my output my output will be one two three four four dot one two right so this is a, an exam an important function an important option for the decimal to string function which is suppress zero so any zeros which do not mean anything would be suppressed now another very important function is valid so in this function using this function you can validate whether the data is in the correct data type format or not so if it is a number that we're expecting and it's coming as a wildcard column so you want to check if it is a valid number if it is a valid then only you want to add another number to it otherwise you just want to reject that record so if that is your condition again for validations these are pretty useful functions so is valid is valid you have to give the uh, your format that your data type that you're trying to validate which is an integer so int a and the input column a my value is one since my value is already 1, it fits into an integer, my output would be 1. Now, let's say my input column here becomes 3800.96.06. I'm still validating if it is a valid integer. What will be my output? My output will be 0 because this is not a valid integer. It's a decimal. It cannot fit in an integer data type. That's why my output would be 0 now is valid date so as the name says it will check if the input that you have, the value in the input column that you are getting can be converted as a valid date or not accordingly if yes then it will give the output as one if no it will give the output as zero so this is your date let's say is valid date input dot column a one yes and now let's say in the string in the input column we are getting the value as 3800.96.06 which is some decimal value can it be converted into a date no so what will be my output here zero is valid decimal so this would be a check for valid decimal values this is my valid decimal value is valid decimal i apply the function i get the output as one now i pass a string character to it I pass a string value to it. Is it a valid decimal? No, it is not. So what is my output? Zero. Is valid time? Is this a valid time? Yes, it is. So my output is one. Now, is this a valid time? Test. No, it is not. So my output is zero. So this function you should use because if otherwise you just want to map, if you read it as a string, as a varchar, and then later in the job, try to map it to a data type like a decimal. And the value that we're getting is test. So it cannot be mapped to a decimal column now. So your job would fail. So at the first stage itself, it is advised to do all these validations and the records that fail these validations should be collected down the reject link. So these are pretty useful functions to do all those kinds of validations. Is valid timestamp. Is it a valid timestamp? It is a valid timestamp. So output is one. Is my string test a valid timestamp? Of course it is not. So my output is zero. Now another function, string to date. This is the value we're getting in string. String to date, the same value. Now this is the value that we're getting in the string. String to date. Now I can define a format in which I want this value. So person DD, person MM, person YY, and okay. So this is not right so the string to date this is your input this is your input and you have defined the format here as input column a person dd and colon person mm but no this is right okay so what is happening this is your input you need to define in what format you're getting your input so this is coming as colon so the format that it should try to check is person dd colon person mm person uh, colon Person y y y y. So d d colon m m colon y y y. Is it a valid date? Yes, yeah, it is. It can be converted into a date by default. It will convert into this format with a hyphen in between. String to decimal. Convert the string to decimal. It's already a decimal, but now what depends is you can you can specify your decimal precision and scale. So seven two is my precision and scale. 
what will happen i'll get the same now this is my string to decimal and i have defined a scale of two so only two digits after the period but i have got four in my input now what happens again i need to use some options the seal option what will this do this will round up towards the higher digit the floor option it would round it towards the lower digit the round underscore infinity option will just round it off and the truncate zero option it will just give it like this it will just truncate the extra characters and give you the remaining value string to timestamp so this is your string value to timestamp as it is again you can define your formats various kinds of formats you can define and you will get your output in that particular format timestamp to date similar if you have a timestamp you just want the date part out of it use a timestamp to date function on that input column and you'll get the date part out of your timestamp timestamp to string now this is your timestamp value you want to convert it into a string just say timestamp to string input column that is the value on which we want to perform this operation i get this output now I define a format in which I want the output and I'll get the output in that format, right? So you can define the format whenever you're trying to do a data conversion, especially for the timestamp and the date columns, you can define a format in which you want the output to be and the output will be formatted. If it is a valid value coming in from the input, the output would be formatted in the format that you have defined while calling this function. Now we have seen the string functions, we have seen the type conversion functions. Now another very important thing and that should be handled in the data is the nulls that are coming in the data. So nulls should always be handled otherwise the all the operations null might not be a valid value and all the results might be wrong because it might not be a valid value. So we need to handle nulls in our functions. So we have a whole category of the null handling functions that can be used first function is not null simply a check whether the value that you are getting from the input is a null or not null so you can use it in your if then else statements if this is not null then do this operation otherwise reject the record is null another check if the value is null then reject the record else do this operation null to empty now what is this function you just want to you have a null coming in from your input but you do not want to reject that record because the other attribute values might be valid for that record and you still want to count that record so but you don't want to take it as null further on so you can just replace null to empty so if it's a var char or a string you can replace it with empty null to empty input column a you will get empty null to zero now what if it is an integer or a decimal then you cannot replace it with empty so you replace it with zero null to zero so it will give you the output as zero now what if i have a particular requirement that if i get null put minus one so you can specify your null to value so in this case we have specified four what will be our output four set null simply set null so what happens is many times when you are developing your job there might be many number of columns defined in the target for some of those columns at that particular point of time probably there is no derivation but probably in the future sometime there might be some logic implemented for those columns as well so we still want those columns in the target but we have no derivation or transformation logic for those columns then we can just set them to null if they are nullable columns so use the set null function for doing that now we have seen the string functions, the type conversion functions, the null handling functions so string functions we have seen so there must also be some mathematical functions so mathematical functions are what any kind of mathematical operation that can be performed absolute absolute is one function abs so absolute is what if we, even if your result is coming as a negative it will make it a positive so absolute 12 minus 34 would be if you just do a 12 minus 34 would be what minus 22 but if you take an absolute of that it would be 22 so absolute you just give your input column a minus input column b or what is your input just one input column and it will take out the positive value for that value so absolute 12 minus 34 would be the same as 34 minus 12 right seal it will round it off towards the higher number so 
will become 2356. Floor rounded down 203.25 will become what? Just 203. Max. So max is a function you can compare to input values and find out which one is a maximum value. So instead of writing if A is greater than B, then B, then A, else A, instead of doing that, you can just use this function straight away, max input column A, input column B. So it would compare A and B, whatever is the maximum column value, it will output that. So max 6, let's say the value for input column A was 6, for input column B was 101. What is the maximum value? 101. So it will output this as 101. Min function, opposite of max function, input column A, again it will compare to input columns, whatever is the minimum value, that is the value that it will output. So the minimum value in this case will be 6. Now there uh, is another category of function which is used for the transformer looping in many cases is the transformer utility functions. Let's look at them. So the utility functions are get saved input record. So this is a new function that has been introduced and in when the looping was introduced. So whatever the input records that we're reading that are get saved to the transformer cache memory and those save input record is a function to save those functions and you can get the saved input record. It will give you a count of the records which have been saved input records which have been saved so that is one utility function next surrogate key is will give you the value of the next surrogate key so all these functions are applicable uh, most of these functions are applicable for the transformer looping when we implement an example of the transformer looping we'll be able to understand all these functions so transformer last row handling functions there's something also known as the last row handling functions so as the na name says last row it will tell you the last row in that group so in the in this function this is a function last row in group you need to define input column as the parameter your input column becomes the group by column so if we say country id it will group by the country id and whatever is the last row in the group based on the country id at that time it would be set to 1 otherwise it would be set to 0 so you can identify the last row in the group based on the key column on which you want to perform the group by by using this function last row in group 